Welcome, friends. It's wonderful to be able to gather with each and every one of you again, especially as we have word that our churches are on the verge of finally opening 15% for next weekend. So for Reverend Aaron McIntyre, for myself, Father Matthew Brunet, we wish to welcome all of you who are watching from either Knox St. Paul's United Church in Cornwall, St. Peter's Catholic Church in Cornwall, or any church in the area or, or even further. It's wonderful to be able to gather. It's been a while, um, but it's, uh, it's wonderful to be able to yet again gather and to hear the Word of God and to share some words uh, with each and every one of you. So our Gospel today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before COVID, oh, in the glory days of when we could travel, I had an opportunity to go for a couple of years to visit Florida with some friends. And uh, getting a chance to go to Orlando, we visited Celebration, Florida. Those of you who have perhaps been to the Orlando Kissimmee area, perhaps have visited this um, kind of, well, fake town, I guess. The Walt Disney Corporation built this town as an ideal, perfect kind of Americana town with complete with uh, churches and schools and squares and lovely restaurants. But it's the houses that are most interesting. Beautiful homes with white picket fences and absolutely perfect manicured lawns. Well, and how many of us, maybe we are the kind of person who has a perfectly manicured lawn. Maybe we know people who have perfect, perfectly manicured lawns. Maybe we want to be those people. <laughs> I confess I'm not. Um, but but we, we see them around. These lawns are perfect, nary a weed, definitely no dandelions. They get, they get plucked up as soon as they come. And, and they're gorgeous. And I know others kind of go, hmm, it, it's lacking something, but it's an ideal that folks have strived for for a number of years. Our parable today, though, sort of turns that, that ideal on its head. Because here's Jesus first talking about the soil that produces this magnificent, magnificent um, stock of wheat or, or grain, and it just sort of grows magically. But then he says, but consider also the mustard seed. Now, I'm sure we've heard this parable over and over and over. If you're a churchgoer at all, it's probably one of the parables you've heard, I don't know, maybe the most. I think it's in most of the Gospels, if it not is. all of them. Yeah. And, and so there's this parable of the mustard seed and how it's the smallest of all seeds and out of it comes this great big tree. But we consider the mustard seed a weed. At least in Jesus' time, it was a weed. And even though, I mean, we have mustard in our fridges. I love mustard. I have mustard like on everything, pretty much. So we use it, but the seeds, the, the weeds just start to take over. If we were to make a modern day Europe, uh, American kind of comparison, North American comparison, we'd say the kingdom of God is like a dandelion seed. It just, it doesn't take much. They're tiny and they float everywhere and they plant and they take over. Not only do they take over, as Reverend Aaron was mentioning, in the second part of this parable that we've got here today, where we see, as Reverend Aaron has mentioned, a farmer actually allowing this noxious weed to be able to kind of take over his garden, his, his crop, 
but then allows the birds to come and find homes within the branches of this mustard tree or large shrub or bush. And we think to ourselves, what farmer in their right mind would, would do this? I mean, when you plant seed in your crop, you've got scarecrows to scare away the birds. You don't want birds to be able to come and, and nest in your field and to be able to steal the crop of what you've got. But the amazing thing about this parable, like so many of the parables that Jesus shares, is that it's got a message. And the message is that the weeds, the unwanted, the misfits, all of us in a certain sense, that there's a chance for the kingdom of God to be our home, to be a place where we can root ourselves. We've, this particular gospel follows a very interesting gospel passage that just comes before. Yeah, so there's the bit about the, the good soil that produces a good good plant, and then there's a piece about the weeds. But before that even, there's a bit, another parable that we've all heard of the, the farmer going out to sow, sow seeds, and he sows it, Oh, he sows the seeds in good soil, which produces good fruit, but also in rocky soil where they kind of the plants sprout, but they they wither in the heat mm -hmm. on the stone on the path, which is packed so hard the seeds can't even germinate. They can't even take root, and the birds come and eat them all in soil that's not been prepared, where the weeds kind of come and and choke them out. And so here's this parable and. You hear that one and go, oh, oh, I want to be that good soil. Oh, like, because the question is usually, which soil are you? Will you let God's love grow in your heart kind of thing? And it's like, well, I hope I'm the good soil. And it, it produces some anxiety. So here we are with that one, the bit about the good soil, and now this one about the weeds and reminding us that, you know what? God's love, God's power, God's imagination is limitless and so whether we feel like we are wide open to God's love to God's grace um, or if we are closed if we're hardened if we feel like we just don't fit if we don't belong if we are one of the weeds um, God's God's love and God's grace are limitless and God can do wonders with each and every one of us whether we're good seed, whether we're mustard seeds, whatever whatever we are, I, I don't want to push that parable too, too far, <laughs> or metaphor too, too far, but God can do wonders with each and every one of us. You almost sense in a certain way with this passage where Jesus, who was just described as Reverend Aaron has mentioned about the, the seed in the different soils. And as we pray and hope, oh, please let me be the good seed in the good soil. How many of us fall short of that? We realize that we do get choked up with all kinds of things out there in the world. Our faith does through, go through convulsions and somersaults and so forth, particularly through difficult times like the pandemic we've gone through. And yet Jesus pauses at the end and says, okay, for all of you who feel like you're weeds, misfits, or you don't have your complete act together, and of course they're legion in their number, which signifies that there are quite a few of us that are like this. He says, there's still hope for you. Kingdom of God has room for you. There's space for you. And the beautiful thing about this gospel passage as well is it's not just the kingdom of God as we know heaven to be because Jesus is constantly encouraging us to build a kingdom of God in our own midst right here. It's the way our churches are meant to be. Our churches are meant to be places where not just the perfect, because there's no perfect person there, but not just those who have their complete act together, who follow everything to the letter, that, that find a home, that everybody has a place, especially the weeds especially those who consider themselves misfits. How many of us have heard people, particularly Reverend Aaron and myself as, as ministers, as, as clergy, we hear comments from people who will say, well, I can't step foot in the church because if I did, you know, the roof would cave or the whole place would catch on fire. Oftentimes those same individuals feel deep within themselves that they're not really welcomed at church for any kind of reason whatsoever. They just don't feel the church is open to the likes of them. Well, you're in for a surprise because this passage is telling a complete different story. Jesus is encouraging us to build churches where all are welcome, where everybody feels a sense of connection, where everybody, no matter their spirituality, no matter their faith growth, whether it's huge or mustard seed small, everybody's got a place. And this past week, I shared with Reverend Aaron a story that I'd come across that I thought um, 
brought some value to, to this uh, passage that we've got here today. Um, there's a pastor in Chicagoland named uh, James McDonald, and he runs Harvest Bible Campus Church. Seven campuses spread throughout the city of Chicago that have over 10,000 people in their congregation. I mean, amazing. But anyway, this particular pastor, uh, Pastor James, decided he would try an experiment. Now, the experiment was more or less on the issue of homelessness, but it has something to connect with what we're talking about. He dressed up as a homeless man. He put on a wispy beard, wore a disheveled kind of flannel coat that was all ripped up. He chose Dallas Cowboy mittens. Those of you who are watching and know how much I love the Packers know, I can't stand the Cowboys. They're my most hated team. So I found it interesting that for his homeless attire, he chooses Dallas Cowboy mitts. But anyway, uh, he dresses himself up and he has his grocery cart and he has his little uh, cardboard sign asking for change. And he positions himself outside one of the campuses of one of his church. Sits himself down. Of course, there are cameras that are set, you know, discreetly kind of around to capture what happens. And he's got a video, a really interesting video. And Reverend Aaron is going to put on the screen the, the spot where, I think it's on Christian Post, where you can watch this six-minute long video. It's definitely worth watching. Really interesting. It starts off in a very human way by showing people arriving at church and bypassing Pastor McDonald was dressed in this homeless attire. Passing him like he doesn't exist, he's, he's ignored. Uh, some even walk towards him, see him, and turn around and go the other way. And it goes on like that for a little bit. And of course, when I'm watching that, I'm thinking, ugh, this is uncomfortable because how many times have I done the same thing? You know, when I went, used to go, when I did my undergrad in Ottawa, we used to go to a bunch of us to St. Pat's Basilica in downtown Ottawa for the last chance to dance. Sunday night mass at like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. And there were always a large number of people asking for money coming in and out of the church. So many, in fact, that I can remember walking in and out and not, not stopping. And so this is an interesting visual that we've got in this video that Pastor McDonald puts on. So anyway, people ignore him and so forth. And all of a sudden, this one time, he gets up with the grocery cart and you see him walking through the church on his way to the pulpit to be able to address his congregation. We don't see the faces of the people who are watching, but we see a lot of heads bowed, probably recognizing, wait a minute, I know this guy. I might not have been kind to this guy. And he takes off his disguise and he begins to talk and he begins to share on homelessness, how we treat each other. And then he closes his talk by saying to the congregation, you're probably wondering, where does our church fit in the way that we treated this situation? And he says, awesomely. And then he shows the last part of this video, which is the best part to watch. He shows the reaction of members of his congregation. Sure, at the beginning, you had a lot of people that came in and out and ignored. But the number of people who stopped with their kids, offered him breakfast, offered some money, uh, offered to pray with him. And the best part of all, invited him in. Can you come into church and sit with us? <laughs> I mean, we see this and we think, wow, would I have the courage to do that to somebody that I don't know, to welcome them in, to be able to sit with my family, to sit with myself, to gather as a church community to see this? It is powerful and it is a sign of where our churches need to be as places where everybody is welcome, no matter what they look like, no matter, no matter anything. There's just something beautiful in this imagery. It's beautiful, it's powerful to watch, and like, like Father Matthew sh said, I'm sharing the link so you can, you can yeah. watch it for yourself if you're interested. Um, so that one uses a situation of homelessness, and, and very much a case where I think we're all, many of us at least, are guilty of, of walking by a situation where someone is asking for help on the street, and whether we're jaded, whether we're scared, whether we just don't have time, on we go. It ha it's something we do, it happens, whether it's however it happens. So not to say that homelessness is a weed, homelessness is, but hom folks who are homeless are weeds, but to say that some of us feel like, like that person uh, who's ignored, who doesn't fit, who just doesn't want, like folks don't want to come near them. Now, just 
I, I love this parable because it's Jesus saying, don't forget what God can do. Don't forget God can work in us all. Don't forget that we all have space in this kingdom of God's. All of us, all are welcome here. No matter who we are, no matter how we look like, no matter if people pass us by or if we pass people by, all are welcome here. Let's treat each other that way, with respect and dignity, with God's love. Let's welcome each other and take the risks that are, are needed to share that love in this world. Maybe you're watching this video too and you're thinking, I'm, I'm a weed, I'm a misfit, you know? There's room for you, there's room for all of us. We're all in the same boat. And maybe the challenge also, as Reverend Aaron is mentioning, is there could be people we work with, people we know, neighbors, people who are in our own family, who maybe themselves don't really feel welcomed in the church. And maybe we could think, especially as churches start to reopen, albeit in small number, but we know it's coming, God willing, fingers crossed, to be a larger number as the year goes on. But to be able to have the courage to be able to welcome people to come and sit with us, to be able to invite someone who hasn't been to church for a while to come and be a part of, of our family, because that's what the church is. It's, it's a family where all belong. And here's hoping that everybody feels a sense of that as we journey together, making the kingdom of God a reality in our time. Let Amen. it be so. I invite you to open up your hearts and your minds in prayer. Let's pray. Creator God, we turn to you, perhaps with anger in our hearts. We're upset, we're saddened, shamed, we have all kinds of emotions at the hurt and the injustice that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Some of it stemming back a century or more. God, we as a country are, are still responding to the discovery of the mass grave of the 215 children who were found in Kamloops, BC at the the residential school that was there and we know that it's just the tip of the iceberg god and so our hearts are made heavy with this discovery and we're upset with our churches and our governments for covering it up for so long we we pray for justice in this situation and god our hearts are heavy too at the senseless murder that happened in London where this Muslim family was, was killed just by virtue of who they are and the young boy who was harmed severely. We pray for their families, for their friends, for all who are touched by this loss. Surround every person with love and support and help us work to create a country that is peaceful and tolerant and loving. In that same spirit of tolerance and love, we pray as our gospel and our commentary and our sermon sharing today highlights all those who feel that church is not a welcoming place for all kinds of reasons, that we will work hard individually and collectively to ensure that our churches United churches, Catholic churches, any church will be a center of welcome where roses and dandelions can grow together, where all of us, all of us who are part of God's incredible family can feel at home, can feel at peace, can feel loved and accepted. God, we talked today about people who feel like they are weeds, like they are worthless, like they are misfits. And I know a lot of us have been struggling lately with, with the shutdown of our province, with the ways that things have been locked down to try and keep us safe, except the lack of connection with our community, with other people, um, in-person connection. It has been weighing down on us in so many ways. And so God, we pray for our mental health collectively um, that that you strengthen us and give us courage and help us to, to hang on and to work through and find support when we need to. And as we pray also as this, this coming weekend, our province opens up. 
uh, businesses, churches, restaurants, all of us are able to, to start going forward. We pray that this, with numbers low as they are with COVID, that Canadians and Ontarians in particular will make good choices, wise choices, safe choices, to be able to, to um, welcome this new time, but also to act prudently and safely, that God will give protection to us, that we will welcome um, a second shot, the first one if we haven't had it yet, but the opportunity to get a second shot so that we can move forward as a province and as a country and as a world beyond this uh, time of pandemic. We take a moment now to name the prayers that are on our hearts. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day, day our daily bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thanks for gathering with us this week again. And just a heads up that we won't be doing an ecumenical service next week. It's sort of been on and off given our different schedules. So. Uh, not next week, although tune into our different YouTube, Facebook channels because you'll find um, each of us has something on there. I'll be on a week of continuing education next week, so I won't be here. But the week after that, the 27th, the week that, uh, or the week after both our churches open, we'll be um, back together doing an ecumenical service again. And so as we leave our screens, may we go, each and every one of us, knowing our worth in God's eyes. May we go experiencing God's love in this world, and may we go working for peace in the world. And as we do, may we know the blessing of God with every fiber of our being, the blessing of our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sanctifier. Amen. Amen.